So, the end of June, our last meeting in June, the last week of June, Terry and Steve were here. And what they did is introduce the Run for America. They set out to run from Oceanside, California to the White House to honor American military veterans, to bring awareness to homelessness and suicide. And the part that I really was fond of was reminding Americans across the country to start doing more business with veterans. And so they got flyers. I think it was 3,000 flyers that James had printed, included trust vets right on that. And they set out on the 4th of July from Oceanside. And the very first day, well, on the first mile, possibly one of the guys on our team may have suggested they run down through the rocks to run on the beach that day. And um, Terry actually uh, took a spill on the rocks and split his head. And he got stitches. And got up the next day and kept running. And then the goal was to run about 30 miles every single day, day in and day out, until they got to the footsteps of the White House. Uh, Terry St. Chris was driving the support vehicle uh, with water in that, and they got about 600 miles in. So to be clear, 75 years old, 600 miles into the desert on foot, uh, his son Christian uh, ran into some diabetic issues, and he had to bring him home because he was afraid the run was going to be too much for him. So they split paths. Now in 1996, Terry ran from Minneapolis to Atlanta, Georgia, 75 marathons in 75 consecutive days. At that point, the world record was three. And at 56 years old, Terry set out and did 75 of them in a row. These are remarkable gentlemen. Now, when Christian fell ill and Terry had to come home, that was a tough time. But Steve picked up and carried on the run. And at that point, you're introduced to your new best friend, a baby stroller, <laughs> three wheels, some bear mace, a stick, a knife, and a couple gallons of water here, run across the country. And he did it every day, no matter how good or bad or ugly and the shitty weather and frustrating people, at least some of the folks on the road. Uh, but there was a lot of incredible people along the way, too. And Terry drove down and surprised him twice, which was awesome, uh, trying to figure out, okay, which part of the turnpike is he on? <laughs> is he running into traffic or away from it, just chasing around the country? But these men are built of ferocious tenacity. They do what needs to be done because they think it needs to be done, and someone has to do it. And there isn't a damn thing that's going to stop them. And these are the type of people that I absolutely want to surround myself. Uh, couldn't have more respect for you guys and what you've done and the example that you set for the rest of us and for everyone else that it, it can be done we all run marathons of our own on some level but these guys actually went out and did it across the united states so i'm going to defer to steve he's going to talk we're probably going to run just a little bit late this morning so if you do have to go completely understood but i want to hear this story and i want to hear more about the run i got to be part of a lot of it because we talked on the phone a lot but i want to hear it from your perspective instead of mine so we can go ahead you and i We'll uh, sit down and we're going to give Steve the floor. All right. Thank you, Joe. Hey, everybody. I'm Steve Dalton, and I just wanted to quick, uh, Joe, you want to read this? I just wanted to thank you all so much for your support during my run. It meant a lot. Uh, there were a lot of times my spirit was a little down, and your comments and support really helped in your donations. So. Okay. Got a thank you card here. Three days before they left, they were in this room, and you guys jumped in behind them. Jeff, I know you did repeatedly, Bill. You did repeatedly. Thank you, guys. Dear Joe Johnson and everyone in Trust Vets, thank you so much for your incredible support in making this journey possible. I appreciate everyone's donations, help with motel rooms, meals, and the awesome comments daily to help me going. I met so many wonderful giving people across America. These memories will last me the rest of my life. Joe, your incredible work helping me daily with rooms, meals, and keeping me balanced on tough days was phenomenal. I can't ever thank you enough. I pray Trust Vets is very blessed, and I know you will all help so many veterans prosper in life. God bless you all. Love, Steve Knowlton. He helped me through so many rough days, um, made it 
made it happen when I I was full of fear and um, he took part of my story. We we get down to California and I, I said, Terry, you you get us there and I'll we'll, we'll get to because originally we were going to go to New York and I said, well, we'll get to New York. Don't worry, we'll get there. Um, had no idea that uh, a mile and a half into the run, what was going to transpire and. Walking onto the beach, watching Terry come down the rocks, and I just saw him slip. And I thought, oh my gosh. Next thing I know, he's on a stretcher and going to the emergency room. But you know what? He uh, he's got that never quit attitude, and uh, it was just he's been a uh, life mentor to me. I've seen him go through so many tragedies in life, and you wouldn't know it by talking to him that day. Um, he's taught me to to go through things and not always wear my emotions on my sleeve. Um, to, you know, that old saying, leave whatever your problems are at the door when you start your work. Um, it's really helped me, and he's a living example for that. And, um, you know, as we were going through the desert, uh, three guys cooped up in a hotel every night. It was, uh, we could get on each other's nerves. And uh, there was a lot of attitudes, but um, there was so much camaraderie. And uh, Terry and I were talking about that on the, the way in, you know, how we've always been so close, but there were a few times we yelled at each other. And, uh, you know, now we can look back and laugh at it. Um, but when, uh, when Christian had his seizure, um, there was this moment of uh, complete, like, fear of failure, I guess. And I thought, you know, I could take the easy way out and I could go back with him and nobody would, you know, hold me accountable for it. And that no, I'm not gonna do that because we uh, we made a pact and I uh, as I started running by myself, you know, I I grew up uh, earlier in my life in Washington DC, just a suburb out, outside of it, and every day we went to school, we pledged allegiance to the flag, we had patriotism and we honored there were a lot of current military people living in my neighborhood, um, Vietnam was going on, um, there was a lot of patriotism. Nixon was president. Um, and I just remember growing up through, uh, I, I can believe even in the 80s, that, that that was still there. And as time went on, I've seen our country kind of move away from patriotism to more uh, politically friendly and don't want to offend anybody, and I think uh, our country needs to, to regroup. We can't take a 9-11 to make us say, hey, we, we have to be patriotic now. We've got to stand up for ourselves. I think our, our next generation needs to, to have that sense of honor toward our military. I know I, myself, I got complacent when I started this run. I, I thought, well, that's a great cause. You know, I, I, my, Heart was kind of into it, but as I ran and I met these veterans with PTSD and really heard their stories, um, one gentleman that I sat down with, I didn't even know he, he was a veteran, and I was I was staying at these people's homes, and he got up and left, and I said, I hope I didn't say anything to offend anybody, and he said, no, he's a veteran, and, and I was talking about how our veterans need to be honored the sacrifices they've made going overseas, and we can't take it for granted. Um, so as I went, I, uh, I met so many great people, and uh, I think one of the, the key things that I, I found was yeah, every day that I ran, uh, my body wanted to say, no, no more. The heat is too much. It's the hottest part of the summer. But I thought about the passion and the drive, and that's like every day in your life. You might have a goal way out there, it might take you a year to get there, and there's days, like months into it, where you get complacent and say, well, I'd rather go back to what's comfortable. Or you get angry and frustrated and say, the hell with it. Um, there were times I wanted to do that. I got kicked off the interstate where it was comfortable, a nice wide shoulder. But I, you know, I, I, you know, I just been in group, you know, I just hung in there. I, I, uh, I, I don't know, I, I have to give the glory to God because there were times where I sat under bridges trying to cool off. And I, I, I think of Joe Johnson, there was a time I, I had an 80 mile stretch where there was nothing. And there was this, this little uh, flying jays or whatever. And there was a uh, 
fenced in area in back. They said I could camp. Well, I got in there and it was just before dark. And the lady said, I don't know anything about it. And, and I was so frustrated. I got outside and there was a lot of profanities and I was talking to Joe. And he set me straight. He, uh, he said, um, I'm going to call her. And he called me back and he said, you need to get on your best behavior. Go and apologize and uh, things will work out. And they did. And that, you know, there, were, there were times where I was so frustrated and I was wondering if I was making a difference. And then, you know, I'll keep it short, but I, um, I was coming into D.C. and there was this lady that befriended me probably two weeks before the finish and would call and check on me every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming into D.C. and I said, you know, I have this gut feeling that there isn't going to be any press there and that I'm not going to make a difference. And she just gave me the worst ass chewing I ever got. She said, <laughs> she goes, you've already made a difference. And she started pointing out all the examples of uh, this John Smith out in Oklahoma that had seen me on the news. He, he went with me all the way across Oklahoma to the other side and had about a thousand miles of driving. But the main thing she said, she goes, your parents are going to be there. They're the two most important people in your life and you should be so thankful you are still in your life. And you know what? My whole demeanor just changed and I thought, you know, this is a great experience. And I, I got to the finish and there's my mom and she's in tears and my dad and I'm like, this is something that will last, this memory will last forever. And I, um, you know, we're walking away, they said, you know, we can go get the car for you and come back. And I, I said, no, I'm great. I, that, there was one thing that I was so blessed. I said, this isn't me, God. This is uh, the normal Steve Knowlton will be tired after about 20 miles and just suffer through the next 20. But I, I had so much energy and I just feel like I was totally blessed. And I got a call from John Smith as we were walking to the car. And he was just, um, sorry, he was, he was bawling. And he said, you don't know what a difference you've made in my life. And here I thought, you know, I'm just steep. And, and we all do make a difference whether we realize it or not. And you've all made a difference in my life. I really respect this organization and appreciate all your support through my run. And I'll keep supporting you. God bless you all. I want to share a quick, uh, quick video here. Uh, Bill, can you hit the lights? But would you do it again? Yeah. Would did you, you have to again? use the bear mace? No, I never did. Never did. It's from the previous run too. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do a, a quick. Just a quick news story so you can see what it looked like out on the road out there, and then uh, we'll jump into some Q&A here and then wrap up the meeting, if I can get the projector to turn on. Yeah, Steve and I had a really awkward conversation coming across the uh, the coming across the river. I'm like, you might not want to have the stick and the knife and the bear mace at the White House. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, a little stuff you don't think about, but... Maybe like George Washington. He could have just jumped the fence, but he didn't. So, you know. <laughs> He'd have gotten press coverage. This yeah. is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. See, there's loads here. What's going on? Or it's going. See, this is what you're telling me. It's not worth it. All right. Uh, hang on. I think that was. Oh, yeah. There was a national news coverage. There's uh, some good stories along the way. A lot of local papers, too, picked up stories along the way. Today, St. John Medical Center and MD Anderson Cancer Network are harnessing 140 years of combined expertise and research. We are two trusted teams with one mission to end cancer. One man running across America made it to Oklahoma City today. He started out in California and plans to reach Washington, D.C. by next month. The goal here is to raise awareness for veterans' issues. 
News 9's Heather Hope caught up with this man and joined us now with his story. Heather? And Steve Knowlton is no stranger to long distances. He's completed 47 marathons, and this will be his third cross-country trip. Each race is for a worthy cause, and this time he wanted to honor our servicemen and women. Step by step, Steve Knowlton braces the dangers of running along the turnpike, survives the sweltering heat, and keeps on pushing. It's a long day out on the road for 40 miles. Mileage for a mission to make it 3,400 miles to the nation's capital. So I made it through about three and a half states. Steve started his journey with two friends in California on July 5th. Well, I made it through the hardest part of the desert. But after some health problems, Steve had to make it alone through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and now Oklahoma. <laughs> Running while pushing a stroller with water and a cell phone charger. Pretty self-sufficient, but it does help a lot to get phone calls and support along the way. And old pro, Steve has run across the country twice to bring awareness to different illnesses. He currently suffers from Crohn's disease, but doesn't let that stop him. Keep a few snacks on me, but it'd be nice to have a sandwich. At the chance to do a run to support veterans, Steve jumped on board for yet another cross-country trip. Uh, what better cause than to run for our vets? It's kind of like they go overseas, serve our country, risk their lives, and then come back here and they're forgotten about, which is kind of dusted under the rug. So, time we do something to help them. And today is Steve's 49th birthday. and He's staying in a hotel in Oklahoma City tonight, and he'll continue running to the East Coast tomorrow. Heather Hope, News 9. All right, Heather, thanks for that one. Steve plans to reach the nation's capital by September 28th, making his trip 88 days long. Absolutely remarkable. I had the great joy and pleasure of being part of it on the support staff. Bill, you can hit the light. And so what that amounted to is, hey, Steve, what, what town are you going to tonight? Uh, I don't know, you just throw it out there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I call like the mayor's office. I'm like, so, there's a guy coming to town. He's running across the country to honor veterans. Can you help us? We need to find him a bed and a place to eat. But I call Bill down at the co-op? No. He had his number and he called Bill and Bill's not there and you got to talk to Mike and eventually you're talking to the VFW and the Legion and it got pretty comical. But there were so many places along the way. It was, it was a great challenge for me daily because I had to set out on the phone and cold call until I found a room and a meal or someone to help him into a room and a meal along the way. And we found so many remarkable Americans. You know, at one point I was talking to a mayor, he said, ah, do you think you'd mind if I make him the special guest at our fish fry and we give him a parade? Or <laughs> no, that'd be great. And, and they did. And the next morning, the fire chief led him out of town and as Steve rounded the corner, the entire church congregation came out to cheer him. Um, there was just, there were so many remarkable things that I, I can't wait for you to see the whole story and all the things. At one point he was running across the desert, 84 mile stretch, and he gets 42 miles and sleeps in a tent on the ground with no sleeping bag and gets up and runs another 42 miles the next day. I think the longest was 54. At one point we were on the phone jocking back and forth and we had a guy that couldn't speak English at his hotel. Is this your address? Yes. Are you right here? Yes. <laughs> Do you have vacancies? Yes. Okay, great. Steve, the hotel's right here. No, I'm here. The hotel isn't here. Calling back and forth. Turns out the hotel was 14 miles down the road. Uh, well, Steve, I know you've already run 40 miles, but it's going to be a long day. Another 14 of my friends, right? Right. It's only another 14. The posts with the firemen were really entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. at one point that he was must running, have been fun. His water bucket slipped through, so he's running along the side of the interstate and all of a sudden there's gushing water on his feet in the middle of nowhere. His water broke. Yeah. That happened. Boom boom. So about seven miles back I think we found a town and the guy at the gas station was like, I'm gonna give him Gatorade, I'm gonna give him water, I'm gonna take care of this man. I'm like, cool. Nice. God bless you. He calls me back half an hour later, he's like, but I have no way to get it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, how does that help? <laughs> so we wound up, actually it was the volunteer fire department, <coughs> wound yeah. up and came in and saved the day and took it. And at one point, he kind of got screwed by the Army a little bit. Uh, there was an Army National Guard depot along the way. They said, we're going to take good care of this man. He's going to be a VIP tonight. We're going to make sure that he's great. And Steve calls me later. He's like, yeah, I'm sleeping on a table in the cafeteria. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
But it was indoors. That's why I joined the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> I actually slept yeah. under the table, and uh, every time I moved, the lights came on. Oh. <laughs> well, so we got the red carpet roll out from the uh, Army National Guard. I don't even remember what state that was. Uh, but it was just, it was such a fun thing for me to be part of. And every day my kids is asked, you know, where's Steve? How's he doing? Where is he? And he's at, they, you know, and they're there on the weekends and they'd be hammered away on these phone calls. <clears throat> And just finding these people that, you know, damn right, we'll give him a room tonight. We're going to treat him good. And, and so many restaurants that gave him meals and cafes and subways. And so there's a page. It's, it's Facebook.com. Actually, runforamerica.info. If you want to write that down, runforamerica.info. You can go back and look at the pictures and read the stories and see his uh, amazing journey across the United States. How he got flat tires and pushed an empty stroller and the water broke and... And just there was so many remarkable things. But the thing of it was, there was very few days out of 88 days that we didn't randomly find Americans to step right up and say, I want to support this, and I want to serve this, and I want to be part of this, and I want to help him, and I want to make sure he's successful. And every single day, randomly calling through these towns through some god-awful accents along the way. <laughs> you know, I had some tough times in Kentucky. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, uh, that's one thing I wanted to stress, is I couldn't have done this on my own. I was telling Terry that if you dropped me off in Oceanside, I mean, I never say never, but it would probably take me uh, about a year to get across. To, with all the expenses that were helped, all the support and comments, I, I couldn't stress how things like this organization, doing it as a team, helping each other, we can help each other succeed. So, I mean, you guys helped me. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. So it was, a, it was an amazing thing that you did to honor veterans. And to honor their sacrifices, and, and like I said, I I don't know the full scope of Steve's public speaking and things to come, but it's about not giving in. It's about not giving up. It's about seeing it through to the end. You know, like talking to Barry Bridger when he was here, the POW that spent six years as a POW, a, a bad day just isn't a bad day anymore. Knowing that he spent six years in that, and when I'm hammering on the phone and juggling crap, and Steve's still running, he's still running. He's been out there 12 hours, still running. And, you know, it's just, it was such a remarkable thing for us all to be part of. So thank you to everyone in this room that contributed. Tom, Kenneth? I just want to make a comment. Um, Steve, your, uh, your posts at the end of the day were just incredibly uplifting and encouraging here. Uh, it's, it's an amazing, God-given gift that you have to encourage others. And even through probably the, the crappy day, you, you found the, uh, the strength to uh, give it away give the encouragement away. So I thought, that, to me, that was the most amazing part of your journey. I, I don't want to downplay the, the physicality of it, but just the spirit Thank you very that, much. that you had. Yeah, because yeah, we, we talked throughout the day, and he, you know, uh, and got pushed off the interstate, so he's on the shoulders, and there's like trucks full of brush like hitting him on the way by, and pit bulls <laughs> trying to chew your leg off, and people driving by yelling at you, and just all this crap all day long, and Steve gets back to the hotel and says it was another good day. And I met more good Americans, and I'm proud to be doing this, and God bless our veterans. No matter how much you got the shit kicked out of you, you took care of us at the end of the day. All of the people that were cheering you on, it was incredible. Thank you so, so much. So thank you for letting me, uh, us yeah. all be part of that. Steve, don't you have a, a book? sort of a commercial, a book that <laughs> you get on the internet? I guess. Oh, yeah, when I ran uh, four years ago, I, I ran for Crohn's disease. I ran from Seattle, Washington to Key Largo, Florida. Um, and it, my friend from high school said at a reunion, he goes, why don't you write a story about that run? And I, and I thought, well, maybe I should tell something leading up to it. So I started out how I got into running. My father started running in the mid-70s. He used to drink a lot of beer and smoke cigarettes. and. Uh, coach got him running again and as a little kid I was very impressionable and so I started running with my dad and pretty soon we were running marathons and it became like like that movie a river runs through it where they go fly fishing um, it was something we just did no matter what if I showed up drinking till two in the morning I would still show up and run the marathon um, that's part of my story too is I, uh, I had Crohn's disease and the became chemically dependent because it, I, it was put on Demerol for months and it just became part of me and then I switched to alcohol and that's part of the story too. 
my ups and downs with that, but it, it really stresses um, no matter how many times you fall down, you keep getting up. There's always hope. So it's called Longer I Run. And, and if it's, you run for America.info, it's the second post. Actually, it's the second post on Run for America.info right after he's trying to help us. So when you go to that, it's the long, Longer I Run. And don't let him kid you. I wasn't all fun and games. There's a couple times, uh, and there's more than once where you're like, Joe, ah! And I'm like, shut up and run. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. You got eight more miles to go. I got shit flying all over my kitchen. <laughs> shut up and run. It was a text. I was like, Did you mean that? <laughs> it was awesome. Um, but no, you you inspired a lot of people, including myself. What you did is absolutely tremendous and remarkable. And I'm thankful to event Terry as well because he inspired you. You guys are exactly what we want. I want myself and my kids to be made of. It's what I want Trust Vets to be made of. I want that ferocious tenacity where you do what needs to be done because it needs to be done and somebody has to do it. So thank you, you gentlemen. Have that. You're, it's incredible what you've done. And I, I know your story and what, what we do. And I've even told him, you know, the way he presents himself, he looks like an actor, he talks like an actor, but very humble man. And, uh, <laughs> Very hard work and dedicated. Thank you, Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Steve before we wrap up? How do you train for something like that? I ran one marathon, I'd never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I basically, I was uh, I was only doing like 10 miles a day, and then on the weekends do some 30s. But I had the 30s down pretty good. What I do is just bring cash with me and run down 42 toward Apple Valley, and then just stop in McDonald's or anywhere I can get water or pop or anything. Um, eventually, you know, if you do it enough, like anything, you do it enough days in a row, your body gets accustomed to it, and it just becomes natural. Um, you know, if I were to do it today, it would probably take me a few weeks to, to feel comfortable again, just because I've let down. Mm -hmm. I'm only doing four to 10 miles, but uh, I mean, it's not it's not like a marathon, you can't really train for it. Sure. You just mentally have to Terry taught me that it's it's a mental game. Yeah. And your body wants your body, mind and soul wanna quit every day. So you just have to push through it. Yeah, jogging three thousand miles is a mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I have <laughs> I have four little boys and we would, you know, we would track where you were and stuff and in the end when you were in the ocean, one of them said, do you think he's scared of sharks? I said, <laughs> I don't think so. Of all the things you encountered along the way, I doubt the sharks in the ocean are your fear at this point. No, so that was, was a great was, finale. I was surfing and there were sharks out oh. there, but it, it's funny, I mean, you, you see other people, I'm like, well, they're out here and they're not all scared and going to shore, so. <laughs> Better man up. Wow. wow. I'm not nope. going to tell him that. <laughs> Is he not signing up for either of those activities? No. So, uh, Steve and Terry are going to stick around for a bit if anyone has any questions. We didn't get a chance to introduce John, Hennon, and Tom.